My last episode was meant to be about having some fun and learn to attempt to print the QSN as supplied by the brilliant Russ at RWG Research. Its intention was to learn more about my producer and see what its limitations were as well as improve my printing methodology and share my findings with you, the audience, all in a single weekend. Instead, what transpired was two weeks of stress and annoyance. But knowledge was gained. And besides, you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. The most important knowledge gained was the potential risk that the producer put my nerd cave in from the blue smoke and burnt parts from a four day print. The issue was very real and very scary at the time, but luckily, being a person of rationale and logic, curiosity took over before fear could set in, and what I wanted to understand was what went wrong. Now, the phrase, don't shoot the messenger, couldn't be more relevant here. In my efforts to inform you, the viewers, of this situation, a lot of you accused me of clickbaiting, and indeed, the thumbnail may have come across a little attention grabbing. But look around you. Look for the areas that are hazardous, dangerous, or possibly trying to prevent you from doing damage to yourself, others, or property. Are those signs not a little bit clickbaity? And need to grab your attention for the purpose of educating a message? Well, if it upset some of you, then for this, I'm sorry. But if it only helped one of you to gain knowledge, whereby should you be put in the same situation as I was, but from watching these episodes, you were able to save yourself the stress and time and resolve the problem efficiently, then it's well worth losing a few subscribers over. In the meantime, I have been in communication with Prusa Research, which takes a little longer than usual, as well as doing my own investigation to provide you with accurate information. And from recent communication from them, this is what they have to say. This problem with the Rambo board is quite rare. We ship 5,500 printers monthly and it happens to 2 to 5 every month. But I understand it looks bad. It is not really a fire hazard as the connectors are self extinguishing, but still one of the bigger problems that we have to deal with. So let's take this opportunity to learn something. Let's learn a very important engineering skill set the six W's what, who, where, when, why, and how. And so in this episode, I will share with you how I carried out my research to find a fix. But in no way could this be the best solution to prevent this from happening to you. But certainly from my understanding, from fact finding, this may certainly minimise the likelihood of you suffering the same issues. It's also well worth noting that the problem actually does not only exist with just Prusa printers, but every printer that has a heated bed and a separate connector to its control board. So do watch this episode through to the end, and this will help you too. During a long printing period, the printer was found to be smoking with the smell of burnt plastic and the heated bed no longer heating. As there was no injuries to anyone, instead, we'll ask which main components were affected. It was the Molex connector which mainly seemed to be the black ground wire as well as this wire itself along its length to the heated bed somehow overheated and melted the cable tidy too. So here we are asking was there any external factors that may have contributed to this problem such as environment? While it was in the nerd cave and the ambient temperature here was between 18 and 24 degrees celsius over a 4 day period. In addition, to improve the heater bed cable management, I used um, a length of cable as part of the cable management system. I know, it sounds a bit ironic, but it's a simple and temporary solution that really works. The only reason I mention this is because this cable is in the vicinity of the melted cable tidy. But the Y itself was not a closed connection and therefore the likelihood of this Y causing heat induction from an eddy current is highly unlikely. As you're now well aware, after a prolonged 4 day print, the heated bed set at a fixed 60 degrees celsius somehow overloaded the connectors, causing them to overheat. 
There are a few theories, and from weighing up the information from forums, speaking to Prusa's support team and the physical evidence from the damage, there was clear evidence that the amount of electrical current being drawn from the machine, the connector was unable to handle this, and as a result overheated causing the Molex connector to burn out, melt and lose connection, which resulted in the smell of burnt plastic and the failure of the heated bed no longer heating. Well, that is the 6 million clickbaited magic question. The connector itself is certainly well specified and Prusa has done well to ensure that these parts are of the highest quality than any other manufacturer and certainly have not scrimped here. They are rated at 60 amps at 300 volts and the wire gauge used for the heated bed is measured at 60 gauge. So it certainly can't be any fault of the manufacturer. And for those concerned about your homes or sheds burning down, fear not. The connector housing is made of a polyamide material which in itself has the characteristics of being a non-flammable fire retardant with a working temperature range of between minus 40 C to plus 115 C. And this was in fact confirmed by the Prusa support team. Only possible explanation and something that is a common fault in these type of connectors is the connector itself may have come loose during operation, thereby minimizing the point of electrical contact between the male and the female connector terminals, thus putting these terminals under tremendous electrical load and overheating them to the point of failure. So it seems the solution is simple, prevent the connector from ever coming loose in the first place. How? I would say the simplest solution is to apply a blob of hot glue across the male connector and the board to prevent it from vibrating loose. In fact, some of those willing to go the extra step have desoldered the female Molex connector off the ramps board and directly soldered the heater bed wires to these points. A little drastic if you ask me, but certainly a permanent solution that will give maximum connection efficiency. I would also like to add that I feel more comfortable increasing the supply wear of the heated bed from 16 gauge to 14 gauge and in fact provide this as a silicon wire, which proves to be more flexible and further minimizing load vibration on the Molex connector in the first place. Before you reach for your glue gun and silicon wire, you need to be aware that any modification you carry to your printer may in fact affect your warranty agreement, so be sure to check with your manufacturer. In the case of Prusa i3 Mark II customers, Prusa have asked me to inform you if anyone suffers the same issue as I have, get in touch with their customer support either via email or live chat, of which I will provide the links in the description to this episode below. Okay, so I hope this episode we have learned a new skill in problem solving. If ever in life you struggle with problems or issues, remember to practice the six W's. Break problems down into those derivative parts and before you know it, the solution is staring back at you with those big puppy eyes waiting to be adopted. One last thing, let's fix that damn temporary heated cable wire management system I've got going to a more eloquent solution. Besides, I couldn't leave you with this episode without some CAD and 3D printing montages. Enjoy, and I'll see you on the next one. Imagine that we're leaving here. Imagine that we're leaving here.